Hello guys, I am Mohan. Today we are going to discuss about the physiology of the cardiovascular system. Definition. Physiology means study of the function. Cardiovascular means cardio, heart, vascular, blood pressure. Study of function of heart and the blood pressure is known as physiology of the cardiovascular system. Heart. Heart is a muscular organ. It is the shape of a once closed fist. Chambers of the heart. There are four chambers. Right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. Septum. Septum is the division which divides the right side and the left side of the heart. There are two septums. Inter auricular septum and the inter ventricular septum. Next, aperture. Aperture is the division which divides the upper part of the heart and the lower part of the heart. It includes left atrioventricular aperture, right atrioventricular aperture. Left atrioventricular aperture divides the left atrium and left ventricle. Right atrioventricular aperture divides the right atrium and the right ventricle. Walls. Next coming to the walls. There are two types of walls. Seminal walls and the atrioventricular walls. Seminal walls contains aortic wall and the pulmonary wall. Aortic wall is situated between the left ventricle and the systemic aorta. Pulmonary wall is located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. Atrioventricular walls include tricuspid and the bicuspid wall. Tricuspid is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Bicuspid, also known as mitral wall, is located between left atrium and the left ventricle. Tricuspid, it means three cusps. The cusp are of threes. Here, the bicuspid, it includes two cusps. Next, we will discuss about the blood supply to the atrium. To the right atrium, blood is supplied through superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava collects the deoxygenated blood from the parts above the body and the inferior vena cava collects the deoxygenated blood from the parts below the body. To the left atrium, blood is supplied through pulmonary vein from the lungs. Next, on discussing nodes, there are two main nodes, sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node. Sinoatrial node is known as the pacemaker of the heart. Then, layers. There are three main layers, outer pericardium, middle myocardium and the inner endocardium. If this is the heart, the inner layer is known as the endocardium, middle layer is the myocardium and the outer layer is the pericardium. Next, we will be discussing about the blood vessels. Blood vessels are the part of the circulatory system. Their main function is to transport blood throughout the body. The oxygenated blood from the left ventricle goes out to the systemic carota. It reaches the body tissue through a series of blood vessels. These are the series of the blood vessels. The exchange of oxygen with the carbon dioxide takes place at the state of capillaries. At the capillaries, the oxygenated blood is converted to CO2. Then, we will be discussing about the layers of the blood vessels. The tunica adventitia is the outermost layer of the blood vessel. The middle layer is the tunica media and the innermost layer is the tunica intima. There are two elastic lamina in the blood vessels. They are most abundantly found in aorta. The two elastic lamina are external elastic lamina and the internal elastic lamina. External elastic lamina is located between tunica adventitia and the tunica media. Internal elastic lamina is located between tunica media and the tunica intima. Now, we will be discussing about the human circulation. William Harvey first discovered the human circulation. There are two types of circulation, systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation. Systemic circulation is known as the major circulation because it takes part in the major circulation of the body. The systemic circulation starts from the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, the oxygenated blood is passed through the body through the systemic aorta. From the aorta, it reaches the arteries. From the arteries, it gives rise to arterioles. From the arterioles, it rises to capillaries. At the capillaries, the oxygenated blood is converted to CO2, deoxygenated blood. From the capillaries, it is converted to venules. From venules, it rises to veins, and from veins, it rises to vena cava. It may be a superior or inferior vena cava. The blood from the superior vena cava enters the right atrium. From the right atrium, it enters the right ventricle through the tricuspid wall. Here ends the systemic circulation. From here starts the pulmonary circulation. The blood from the right ventricle goes through the pulmonary artery and reaches the lung. At the lungs, the deoxygenated blood is converted to O2 at the stage of capillaries. 
the oxygenated blood from the lungs comes through the left atrium through the pulmonary vein and reaches the left atrium from the left atrium it goes to the left ventricle through the bicuspid valve here is the secretion now we will be discussing about the actions of the heart there are four main actions of the heart they are chronotropy enotropy dromotropy bathmotropy chronotropy depends on the frequency of the heart beat if there is an increase in the frequency it leads to tachycardia that is known as increase of the heart beat if there is a decrease in the heart beat it leads to bradycardia this is known as decrease in heart beat next enotropy enotropy depends on the force of heart contraction if there is more amount of force it's known as positive enotropy if there is less amount of force it's known as negative enotropy next dromotropic action dromotropic action depends on the conduction of impulse through the heart if there is more amount of conduction it leads to positive dromotropy if there is less amount of conduction it leads to negative dromotropy next bathmotropic action bathmotropic action depends on the excitability of the cardiac muscle if there is more amount of excitation it leads to positive bathmotropy if there is less amount of excitation it leads to negative bathmotropy next complications there are three complications atherosclerosis hypertension and thrombosis atherosclerosis is due to the narrowing of the lumen deposition of the low density lipoprotein on the blood vessels it leads to atherosclerosis next hypertension hypertension is due to vasoconstriction that is the constriction of the vessels the constriction of the vessels leads to vasoconstriction so it causes the hypertension next thrombosis thrombosis is due to the formation of the clot on the blood vessel it affects the blood flow on the blood vessels guys now we have discussed about the overview of the cardiovascular system in the upcoming videos we will discuss the further topics in detail for further information refer the evaluation of the books in the description below until then it's bye for a moment